DA uh, Scott McNamara in uh, right now. Are you watching any of the Jeopardy stuff? I only saw one episode so far. Last night he almost got beat. Did he almost get yeah, beat? Yeah, I mean he he won by eighteen dollars last night. Really? Yeah. yeah. And he got rattled when his first pick was the Daily Double, and he had no money, so he couldn't he couldn't get way ahead yeah. like normally he'd be he get a daily double he's got like six thousand dollars he bets it all right so he got rattled yesterday ended up getting the question wrong and was negative one thousand is how he started the, wow. the day off my question is tonight will he be rattled does this get into his head mm-hmm. like a pitcher right yeah. and you know it's they have that one bad outing and then they get back up on the mound and they just can't remember how they mm-hmm. pitched i wonder if this guy has the same It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Um, I was thinking about uh, doing a fake, um, like a fake investigation to make my competition look bad. <laughs> what do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. But before <laughs> we talk about that, I on Saturday oh. I was out at the Mud Run. And I did Andrew see that. Andrew did a phenomenal job. I saw him. I was at the um, the last wall that they climb and. Um, a lot of there, not very many people made it over the wall. A lot of people would, would take the um, smaller obstacle, which was a rope, hit, like kind of a rope hill. Yeah, well, thank and, God uh, uh, I had friends to assist me because at that point it was just nothing left. He, he didn't give up. Left. He fought hard. <laughs> he fought I thought, real hard. I thought the picture he sent uh, the two of you uh, was quite a feisty picture. You <laughs> seemed, uh, Andrew seemed like he was. That was in a that was in a warmer, uh, calmer moment. That oh, I was okay. trying to get over that poor wall. Yeah, because <laughs> you know I got to tell you. It it was cold on Saturday. It was very cold. Yeah. It was very once cold. you once you jump into the initial pond uh, and you get that first jolt of this is freezing cold water, everything's fine after yeah. that because yeah. your body oh, goes go. numb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here we go. I'm just saying your body I've just done, goes numb. I have done the uh, the that ice water thing in the middle of the winter, and it is it's it's yeah. it's a nasty shock to your system. There's no doubt. I mean, this wasn't quite as cold, but it's still. It's cold. Yeah. yeah. Very cold. It was a good time for a good cause. Though. The wind was doesn't a very, It's a very good cause, and it's a good thing for Dean's bro. Yeah. Um, and we're still going to do that that lunch. Wing night. I know. I'm, I'm I know. I've heard somebody this. was down there. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was spending a lot of time down in the borough. <laughs> All right. So I, I realize my tease was a little aggressive um, coming in here. <laughs> but I, I do think that this is uh, sometimes that this mayor, Paul Marion, in full disclosure, I have been hired by Marino's campaign. I do okay. television commercials. Mm-hmm. and uh, But that uh, I, I in this case, I cannot... Avoid talking about this because I would be talking about it anyway. Mm-hmm. I just think the optics of this it just looks like it's all political, especially given the history of the Common Council in Utica where you get people go head to head all the time. It does have that appearance. And um, and I do th- the report was somewhat critical of that um you know, of that history of the Common Council. You know, a lot of people, um, the, when the investigator interviewed him, said, oh, this is nothing. And and I, he I, he made at least one, if not two, comments like, you know, it's a sad state of affairs, and it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is something that going forward, um, as the report indicates, um, you know, there, there was no criminality in it. Um, I spoke to both parties. I spoke to Joe Marino, and I also spoke to Frankie DeBrango soon after it took place. Um, both of them insisted that you know they were good with each other. They didn't want anything done, and that there was no intentional contact between the two of them. And um, so, as far as I was concerned, it was over. Um, you know, they did this um, report to see if there was workplace violence, um, but a lot of people, when they were interviewed, did indicate that this seemed this was nothing or kind of run of the mill. And and in the reporter or the um, investigator did say, you know, basically that's just that's not right. Right. And and, and, and the take that. yeah and the yeah. takeaway that 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 investigator had and 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 I don't have any reason to disagree with them would be that maybe there needs to be some. Um, uh, training and some, you know, some they need to do something to address that because it's it's not a healthy way to run anything. Yeah, and, yeah. and unfortunately, and it's not just the city of Utica. It's, you know, you see it at every level. If, if you don't hate the person that disagrees with you somehow or another, you're, you know, you're just not doing fulfilling your elected position. And I, I almost feel though that um, that, I, and I used to do like parody commercials of mm-hmm. the WWF. Mm-hmm. 
event. I mean, you're missing out. There's no pay per view. Just go there Wednesday nights. It's a blast. Yeah, the best right. free entertainment <laughs> central New York has to offer. And I mean, for years remember now. these are this okay. this this Common Council. I think the thing that that is for me is that this Common Council seems boring compared to previous. I agree. I've appeared in front of a diff with a different cast of characters, and um, you know, it was it's and that's just what it seems to be. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it. it you know, I remember I was trying to give the city money, and I was like, well, you need to write a report and submit it to us. I said, yeah. really? And then yeah. I'll just give the money to the sheriff's department. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm, not, yeah. I'm not in high school, and I'm not writing a report. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now, wait a minute, though. Based on what Scott said, are you saying you agree there should have been an investigation? You know, it's a tough call, um, and I'll tell you why. When, when you're involved in running the government and um, – and I'm in a unique situation because I have my own investigators on staff. Sure. Um, but when you're involved in running a government, it's difficult because when something happens, you're always in that weird situation. If you do nothing, you're wrong. And if you do something, you're wrong. And, um, you know, in the, the situation with especially today, workplace violence, sexual harassment, um, those type of things, you got to you, I really believe you have to address them. And then it becomes difficult. How do you do it? And um, well, you know, now you're walking me right down the perfect road right? because <laughs> you know. I, I got to tell you the difference between the way Fort was treated by the city of Utica. And that's mm-hmm. the masturbation mm-hmm. case mm-hmm. versus which I listen, egregious, no mm-hmm. doubt about it mm-hmm. and disgusting, whatever. Um, but the difference between the way he was treated and the way the uh, the chief was the assistant chief was treated with the sword fighting and this young kid coming in. I mean, the defense right now by the city is this kid was a willing participant. So I guess I'm going to conclude then that it's okay to be doing porn, inviting friends down, uh, sword fighting, which is a potential recruit. I I think that the thing that bothers me as just a I'm not a citizen of Utica, so I can't be bothered that much. Right. Is that the the way things seem to be by this administration treated differently. I can understand that, and you know, obviously, with the with that second situation, the first one with Fort, that came to our office, right, so right. that kind of got its legs because the in that case, the victim's ex husband came to our office and wanted an investigation, and um, and I and I personally think um, in that case maybe they played that a little bit wrong because I think initially she was looking for an apology and to have her pants replaced. Um, had that been done, I, I don't necessarily think it would have spun into what it was. Yeah, the, yeah. the lawyer started to play, you know, lawyer games, mm-hmm. and he wasn't really in a position where he could win those games. and And I think that blew up. I think he he thought he was going to win the, a suppression hearing, which, um, in my opinion, I didn't think he had any chance to win. It's just he had no legal basis. But yeah, yeah. you know, I, I don't know if he had promised them something. Or, you know, and sometimes you know, lawyers make promises they can't keep we're taught not to do that at law school so mm-hmm. i don't know if that's what happened i don't know if it was a difficult client sometimes you know i know lawyers get yeah. clients that just won't listen to mm-hmm. them um as with the with the other one that also was sent to to me um in that case we didn't see any criminality there are i would agree policy um, ex- especially when what andrew was alluding to when you're talking about a recruit and that's where it always gets complicated a lot of times the, the public thinks well if somebody abuses their position of superiority, that somehow or another that's criminal. It's not, but it clearly can be a sexual harassment claim. Mm-hmm. It sure, clearly can be a claim against the city um, for you know a lot of different things. So um, you know, in that case, um, I'm not sure what they they did, but I mean, you know, that was troubling. It's almost you know. as if it's almost as if the mayor is saying. Well, uh, the DA's office said it wasn't criminal, so everything's okay. <laughs> well, so, he didn't do it on this case. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, the, the chief and the deputy chief were in the room. and um, So and you're talking about the case it. of uh, Marino here. Uh, Marino and DeBrango. Yeah. Um, the chief and deputy chief are right there. I mean, w- as close as I am to you or closer the whole time. So, um, you know, and they both concluded there was nothing criminal. And, um, you know, I, I you know, I. I can understand um, where, where you come to your conclusion. It just seems I like hope, one, one case yeah. is treated differently than the next, right. differently than the next, and, and it just so happens the optics here are you're running against the guy in two months. Yeah, I, I hope that they they can go back to talking about the issues. I yeah. think the city 
And, and you know what? And I, I really think um, they have an opportunity based upon what this report says. Um, change the environment. I yeah, mean, yeah. you know, one of the things I, I did when I started in the DA's office, and I remember I ran into a lot of resistance. When I first started in Utica City Court, everything was done in chambers. It all had a smell to it. Nothing was going on in the back. Mm-hmm. But it, people were lazy. You, right, you didn't right. go out on the bench. Oh, let's do it in chambers. It's easier. I can sit in my office. You can joke around. You know, there's, n- there's no public watching. Right, right. And I got to the point one day I just said, hey, listen, I'm not going in the, in the back. And, you know, I was told by the judge, get your butt in here or else. And I said, no, yeah. you're supposed to do this stuff in open court. And so they have the opportunity right now. I, I believe, look, why don't we change the environment? Why don't we be more civil when we do these things? Why don't we get back to talking about the issues? And there's a lot of issues to talk about in the city. And there's a lot of issues that, you know, obviously the, the hospital is a hot button issue. But there's a lot of other things that, you know, I think one of the things I recently saw in the news, and, um, and I think it would be a great idea. Um, what is the ma- what is the plan going forward? What are we going to do with different areas? How yeah, can yeah. we you know how can we fix the roads and how can we fix the infrastructure and um, and, and those things and you know how can we address the poverty in this in, in our community and how can we overcome the you know and everyone's outraged about the Simpsons but how can we overcome that? You know, that stigma, stigma yeah. of mm-hmm. how people see us. And you know what? You look at other cities, you look at a city like Charlotte or Charleston and, you know, you're talking, you look at Charlotte, it's that's a brand new city. They've yeah, redone yeah. that city. And I, I would hope that, you know, that the people running for office could redirect their attention to what can we do. And a lot of New Yorkers. Upstate New Yorkers tend to move to Charlotte. There's a yeah, lot absolutely. of New Yorkers it's there. It's beautiful down yeah. there, and there's a lot yeah. to do for young people, and, and maybe that's something. I mean, like the mud run. I mean, we were talking about that, but those are the things that young people like to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then us foolish old people think about doing <laughs> <laughs> Next year, Andrew, I'm with you. Yeah. You better be. All right. Be. <laughs> really, uh, all right, so the end of the day, um, maybe there's a lesson out of this. Uh, maybe we all learn from this. Well, hopefully we can um, take our community to a higher level. All right. Uh, DA Scott McNamara, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. Yep.